Thank you for joining. This is Blue Sky Citadel Training. Uh, my name is Akin, Akin Kumi Oladeji. So I'll be the one taking you through uh, what performance testing is. And so this week and next week we'll be covering uh, performance testing, uh, God willing. So yeah. So what is performance testing? Nowadays, when you apply for, I'm sure you know different type of testing that we have. We have, um, I don't know whether you've tried your automation. So we have functional testing, we have mobile testing, API testing, performance testing. There are different type of testing. And actually performance testing actually can stand on its own. You can become a performance tester uh on its own and have nothing to do with either functional testing or mobile testing but nowadays what the recruiter what they do now is they are looking for someone um, with jack of all trade someone that has got a bit of knowledge on as in every type of testing that we've got that is why when you search for jobs that's why the fact that it's functional test test that they are looking for, but in the this, in the job description you'll be saying something like uh, if someone with probably API testing experience will be uh, considered or have more advantage. Someone with performance testing, you know, it's just an added advantage if you have knowledge of uh, the different types of testing uh, that is out there. So we'll be covering performance testing uh, using JMeter and BlazeMeter in this training. So what is performance testing? Uh, performance testing is a general name for tests that check how the system behaves and performs. Performance testing examines the responsiveness, stability, scalability, reliability, speed, and resource usage of your software and infrastructure. I'm quite sure many of you, we all know about functional testing, that you're testing the functional ability of an application. But the performance testing, I'm sure you probably you visited one site or the other that you notice that probably you click a login button or you click a button and it's not responding. It's taking time to respond. You'll be wondering, is it my Wi-Fi, is it my internet? Or is it your system? So such is uh, if if you visited such website, that means they are uh, something is wrong with their performance. They probably they haven't done a thorough performance testing to discover that their website or their website it's so so slow. I think the average response time on any website, if I'm not wrong, is seven seconds. So when you click on probably login button on any website, registration button. It shouldn't take more than seven seconds to respond to you, to open you a web page. But this goes, this differ from company to company. It's not the standard, so it differs from company to company. So characteristic of performance testing, uh, time behavior. Generally, the evaluation of time behavior is the most common performance testing objective. This aspect of performance testing examines the ability of a company or a system to respond to user or system input within a specified time under specified condition. So as I said, if you're working for a company and you're probably you're doing their performance testing for you in their um, is it required uh, requirement now, they must have specified what the response time they are expecting for you. So when you are testing, you are testing against what they've specified to you. So if they said a response time for this particular, whatever you're testing on should be five seconds. And when you are testing on it, your baseline, even your baseline is giving you seven, eight seconds. That means something is wrong. There's a bottleneck somewhere which has to be fixed uh, before you deploy, uh, deploy search into a live or production environment. Uh, resource utilization as well. Uh, if the availability of system resources is identified as a risk, the utilization of those resources, e.g. the allocation of limited RAM, may be investigated by conducting specific performance tests. 
Again, there's capacity issue as well. If issues of behavior of the required capacity limits of the system, e.g. numbers of users or volumes of data is identified as a risk, performance tests may be conducted to evaluate the suitability of the system architecture. So all these things have to be considered uh, when you're carrying out your performance testing. So let's move on. All right. So what are the principles of performance testing? So tests must be aligned to the defined expectation of different stakeholders group, in particular users, system designers, and operational staffs. The test must be reproducible, meaning statistically identical results within a specified tolerance must be obtained by repeating the test on an unchanged environment, on an unchanged system. So when you are carrying out a performance testing, it is advisable that you don't change system, that it remains stable so that the result that you get uh, will be consistent. Because if you change system or change environment, that might in the or make the result to differ so it's advisable that you stick to one environment when you're carrying out the performance testing so the test must be yield a uh, result that are both understandable and can be readily compared to stakeholders expectation as i said when you are testing you are testing against an expectation there is the there will be what the stakeholders are expecting. Take for instance, they are expecting that whether you're performing a load testing, they are expecting an average response time of five seconds. So when you are when you are testing, you have that at the back of your mind as your baseline that you you compared your results uh, with to guide you and others so you know whether the system is overperforming or underperforming. So this, this, the test can be conducted where resources allow either on complete or partial system or test environment that are representative of the production system. So the production system is a live system that you and I, the end user, we are using. Like you go on any e-commerce sites, Next, Argos, those are production uh, sites. But what you are saying here is the system that we are testing on in the development uh, stage must be the same, must yield or be the same thing as the one that will be deployed to the live environment because you deploy from uh, development environment to, from staging environment to live environment. So it shouldn't change the codes and all that should be the same so that when they eventually deploy it to a production environment, which is a live environment, this the, the performance test that has been carried out will remain the same, that you'll be able to say that, oh yes, 100 user can log in at the same time without any problem. So that is what the main, uh, that is the meaning of that. So moving on, examples. So these are the, what you can see on your screen are typical examples um, that was, derived, that was uh, taken from the internet. The first one is regarding the Amazon they said the Amazon site went down due to poor performance. Per minute loss was approximately around $66,000. That is per minute loss. That is the amount of what you pay back when you haven't carried out a thorough performance testing before you deploy to live environment. This is what can happen. You can lose per minute 66,000. That is how much it can cost a company when thorough performance testing hasn't been carried out. Again, Google.com suffered heavy losses up to uh, 555, 500, 545 uh, half a million due to five minutes outage. They are just out for five minutes and that is the amount that they lost for five minutes. It's a lot. As well, looping ticketing was also hampered due to large number of, of applications being sent to the website. I'm sure some of you will, must have experienced this kind of uh, situation before. Probably you're applying for a job, an application, or funding somewhere, and they said the deadline of that application will be the last day of the month. 
the traffic that will go on that website the last day of the month might even cause them to shut down the website because probably it's over and beyond what they anticipated. Probably their website can only take, take for instance, 50,000 users at a time and probably like 70,000, 80,000 are logging in at the same time. That might result to the to that kind of uh, website to be shut down. They, that is when you say, oh, we are having technical issue. Check back in five minutes or check back in 10 minutes. All right. So understanding performance of applications. Uh, as you can see the diagram on your screen, so how many users are accessing the system at the same time? Which activities being performed by the users? Uh, we have two types of users when it comes to performance testing. We have concurrent users and we have uh, simultaneous users. I think we'll still talk about that later on. So uh, the concurrent users are just those that they logged in into a system. They just logged in. But they are just, they are not doing anything. They are just there. Why simultaneous users are those that are actually taking actions on the system. They are clicking, browsing, you know, they are active on the website. So from your diagram, you can see how are the response, how are the response times from end users point of view? Why is the application running slowly? How is the resource usage, bottleneck CPU and all that? So this number of uh users you can see the end users they are eating the server at the same time so they are asking how many transactions per seconds are being processed is the system running slowly because if you haven't done thorough uh performance testing probably the number of users eating your server at once is beyond what your capacity is what you can what you can take but if you've done the proper performance testing, if you during the development stage, if you if you've carried out a proper performance testing, this will identify all the bottlenecks in your system, whether it's a CPU uh, issue or memory issue, and you'll be able to fix that before you actually deploy to live environment. So necessity of running performance and load testing. Uh, Number one, to ensure that the system meets performance expectations, such as response time, throughput, stability under the given level of loads. To estimate the behavior under expected peak load scenarios. To identify and fix performance bottleneck early during the development lifecycle before the go live. To identify the system boundaries and identify optimal the hardware resources to ensure the stability and scalability of application systems, to enable growth in business and user community, and to prevent revenue and credibility loss due to poor performance and fill out of the system. The last point there is really key because take for instance, uh, probably your favorite channel, or let's use your favorite channel, probably they went down for let's say 15 minutes and you're watching probably that's the time you're watching Arsenal versus Chelsea you will find an alternative channel to go and watch it and probably you're paying or whatever can you imagine how much customers or how much end users will move away because they are down they can't watch the Arsenal Chelsea match will move away from their channel and go to the competitors channel to go and watch it so the money that's supposed to go to them is going to the competitors. So that is why it is always good to identify all the bottlenecks that might exist in your system before you actually deploy it to live environment. As much as functional testing is uh, really important, so also is uh, performance testing, which concentrate on the non-functional aspect of the system. So what is load and performance testing? Performance testing means how fast is the system? When I click on login, how fast does it respond to my click? One second, two seconds? And load testing, how much volume can the system process? So 
if 20 users are eating the server at the same time, 30 users, 40, 50, is the system behavior still going to remain the same because you are loading the system with users? Is the response time still going to remain the same? Is, is, is it still going to behave the same way? That is what load testing is all about. Uh, so a performance is a non, as I mentioned just a few seconds ago, is a non-functional test that verifies the response time, the scalability, and the resource demand for a software system on that specific load. All right. So yes, I briefly mentioned this one earlier on concurrent user versus simultaneous users. So what is a concurrent user? What are they? They are those users that log into the application, but some of them, maybe I do, they just logged in, they are not doing anything. Probably that is the time, probably you just said, oh, as a mother, you quickly logged in and you logged into that application, that is the time you wanted to go and do school runs and all that. In their own system, they, they can still see you, you are logged in, but you are just idle, you are not doing anything on their system. That is uh, a typical type of concurrent user. Why simultaneous user are those users logged into the application and are active, they are clicking buttons, they are buying, they are shopping, they are browsing, they are active on the website. So total number of users, these are users authorized to use the application within the enterprise, but are not all necessarily logged in at any one time. So let's look at, at an example. Let's consider an example of flight booking for getting more clarity on these two terms, concurrent users. So it includes all the users that are logged into a business process, such as booking a ticket flight. How many user sessions for booking flights are open? So probably like 20 sessions of booking flight tickets are open, but nobody is taking action. They are just open for the sake of opening. Why the simultaneous user are those users who are currently involved in doing a particular action in a business process, such as clicking a button, clicking a submit button in the booking flight page. All right, so types of performance test. So performance test is that keyword, but surround it, we have different type of tests that fall under performance testing as a whole. So we have a baseline test, we have a load test, we have soak test, volume test, stress test, and spike test. We'll take a look at them one after the other. So baseline testing. Baseline testing is a process of running a set of tests to capture performance metric data for the purpose of evaluating the effectiveness of subsequent performance improving changes to the system or application, e.g. for getting reference results. So a baseline test is, as you can see on the, uh, on the diagram, you are running the very first test so that the subsequent tests that you run, you can have something to compare them with. You can have comparison, you can have, oh, when I run uh, uh, the initial test, this, is, this was the result I got. When I run this test now, this is the result I'm getting. You can compare your now test to your previous test, and you can see how they both differ. So as, as you can see on your screen, they, when, they, when they load uh, only one user on the system, only one user is eating the system, the response time is 23 seconds for one user. So they, they, they're using that as a baseline. So now their first cycle, their first test cycle, they load 25 users, right? And the response time they are getting uh, when they load 25 users is 31 seconds. They can compare it to the four, to their baseline, which is when they first, when only one user eats the system, which is 23 seconds. Same also the their cycle two, right? They load 50 users uh, eating the system at the same time, and the response time they are getting is 27 seconds. As at the same time, they can compare with the baseline and the previous result as well. Same thing with their third cycle, which is 75 users, which gives them the 28 seconds response time, 
and 100 users will give them the 27 second response time. So you can compare the result and you can see, oh, something is wrong somewhere and all that and adjust it accordingly before uh, deployment. Load testing, as you can see from the from the picture that they are trying to kill the small car. They want to, they are trying to weigh how much load we can put on this car before this car actually crashes, uh, crashes or before this car actually, you know, turn over. So they are loading the car, loading it. So what is the load testing? Load testing is a process of putting a load or sending requests on the system or device and measuring its response. Load test is performed to determine a system behavior under both normal and anticipated peak load conditions, e.g. to estimate the expected load for a new release or for future uh, load. So that is what load testing is about. They want to see, they want, they want to be able to compare um, the response time during the normal period and during the peak period to see whether the system will behave differently when uh, much load, that is more people are using it. Is it going to slow down? Is it going to, uh, are we going to have a CPU or memory issue, something like that? So they'll be able to determine by the use uh, of load testing. And despite the fact that, if I go up a little bit, despite the fact that we have different type of performance testing, as I said, baseline load, so volume, stress, or spike. It's not all of them that, it depends on the organization you work for and which one it's more suitable to the type of performance testing that they are carried out. So it's not in all situations or scenarios that you see an organization using all this type uh, of performance testing. So let's go on. Soak testing. So soak testing also means endurance testing usually done to determine if the system can sustain the continuous expected load. During soak testing, hardware resource, e.g. memory utilization is monitored to defect potential leaks. Another aspect is the stability of the system by comparing response time during the first part and at the end of the test. As you can see, these bikers, uh, what is the name of this um, competition? The France de Tour or something like that. You'll notice at the start, at the beginning of that race, everybody will be active because it is the beginning of the race, right? And meanwhile, probably they have 100 miles to cover. But when they are getting to probably like 20 miles, you now see them kind of probably trying to slow down. Now, you won't be, the rate that they started with will now be slowing down because they are getting tired. Then they need to endure. So they you, they need to. And meanwhile, some of them will not even reach uh, the end of the race before they give up. That you know what? I can't do this no more. They give up. They they quit halfway. So it's the same thing with the system. You want to see how much your system can endure when you are loading it. How far can it go? before it says, you know what, I'm shutting down. I can't take this anymore. So that is what soak testing uh, or endurance, te endurance testing is all about. Volume testing. Volume testing refers to testing a software application when subjected to a specified volume of data. So the purpose of volume testing is to show the performance behavior of the program under the influence of this expected volume of load. Example, if we want to volume test our application with a specific volume of data, we need to expand our infrastructure in accordance to test the application's performance on it. So the best results are obtained when we have a one-to-one -one ratio of tests and production environment. So that is volume testing for you. They are, it's just a way, it's another type of testing. So volume testing refers to testing a software application when subjected to a specified volume of data. So you are pushing more data into the system, right? You want to see whether it will be able to undo the data that you are pushing into the system. Probably there's a limit. You want to see whether you can go over and beyond the capacity. 
So you are loading the system with datas, 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 name, uh, age, different type of data, testing data. You are loading it onto the system to see whether the system will crack. Stress testing. Stress testing is conducted to evaluate a system or component beyond the limit of its specified requirement with the goal of causing the system to fail. So the purpose of stress testing is we want to test how, how far we can go before this system actually breaks down. You know, you want to, as you can see from the diagram, they are loading this uh, is it a horse with so much luggage to the extent that everyone fell over. So that is the purpose of stress, uh, uh, stress test. They want to know the bottleneck in the system. They want to know how far can this system go before it, it, it actually breaks? How much user can we actually test this system with the capacity? How much can it take before it actually, you know, before it says, I can't take it anymore? So that is what stress testing is about. And spike, spike testing is a type of performance testing focused on determining or validating performance characteristic of the system under test when subjected to workload models and load volumes that repeatedly increase beyond anticipated production operation for short period of time. So that is what spike testing is about. Let's move on. So why do we need performance testing? Number one, performance testing informs the stakeholders about the speed, scalability, and stability of the application. If the application is not stable enough, why do we want to deploy it to live environment when customers will complain about it? When all you receive is complaint over complaint? No, stakeholders, don't, they don't want that. So they don't want to be rest assured that the speed the scalability, the stability, they are okay before deploying to live. It reveals the necessary improvement needed before the product is released in the market. So when you carry out your performance testing during the staging environment, uh, in the staging environment, before you push it to live environment, this allows you to discover all the bottlenecks, uh, bottlenecks everything that needs fixing before, it's actu you, before you actually make it uh, usable for the end users. So performance testing also ensures that the software is not running slow while several users are using it simultaneously. And you remember what simultaneous users are. Those are the users that when they are on the system or when, on the, when they are on the website, they are the active type. They are clicking, they are clicking on submit, they are browsing, they are really active on the website. So what is the uh we need to make sure that when such simultaneous users are using the system our system doesn't break down so performance testing ensures that the software is not running slow when several simultaneous users are using it so that is the essence of you carrying out something like a load uh, load testing uh, stress testing before you deploy your uh whatsoever into a live environment. So it also checks the inconsistency across different operating system. When you test, it helps you to identify if there's any inconsistency in probably response time, throughput, and order, probably when you are using another operating system. So it allows you to measure this and to fix it before you deploy it to live environment. So advantages of performance testing, validate features. Performance testing validate, validates the fundamental features of the software. The solid software foundation is a key principle of generating software sources. So measuring the performance of basic software function allows business leaders to make key decisions about the setup of the software. So it, that's the first, it helps us to validate the features on the software. Number two is measure the speed, accuracy, and stability. So measure performance speed, accuracy, and stability is a vital aspect of software performance testing. It helps you in monitoring the crucial component of your software on the test. 
this can be you this can give you vital information on how the software will be able to handle uh, scalability so at the same time the most important is to keep your users happy right so measuring application performance allows you to observe how your customer respond to your software the advantage is that you can pinpoint critical issues before your customer. So the, the essence of all testing, whether performance or functional, is to discover the bottleneck, to discover the bugs, to discover the low response time so that we can fix it before our end users are actually start using the product so that there won't be complaint. You can put a smile on their face. Happy customer it makes, means more money in your pocket. And identify discrepancy. So measuring performance provi provides a buffer for developers before release. Any issues are likely to be magnified once they are released. So performance testing allows any issues to be ironed out. So as I've said earlier on, so this gives you the developers, if there are any issues regarding the performance of that application before deployment, it gives them that chance, that opportunity to iron it out, to fix it before it actually gets out there. Um, someone like me and you start using such an application. So that is some of the advantages of performance testing. Moving on, so out there we have so many industry standard uh, performance testing tools that are out there and the likes of we have Load Ninja, Apache JMeter, Webload, uh, Load UI Pro, Load View, New Load, Load Runner and, Sp and Smart Meter. We have Blaze Meter as well. I'll be taking you through uh apache j meter and blaze meter but if time permits uh one of my colleagues might be taking you through new load but that is if time permit because for performance testing i think we've only got this week and next week so if time permits he will be taking you through new load that is fingers crossed for now but admin will let you know if that will be possible or not all right, so that is that is so far about the theoretical aspect of uh, performance testing. So let's let's see how we can install JMeter on Windows. So so JMeter is a Java program. I mean the Java virtual machine must be installed prior to installing JMeter. So the prerequisite of you before you even install JMeter is you have to have Java installed on your laptop or on your PC. So how do we install Java? So to check if Java is installed, open a command line console by clicking on the start menu, then type uh, CMD, enter the command Java version. So if you want to know, if you are not sure whether you've got a Java uh, application installed on your website, on your uh, system before. So this is the way you can check it. So if you type CMD command prompt in the search bot uh, search, uh, button at the bottom of your screen and you click on enter, this opens your command, command line for you. And you can simply check by typing Java that version to see whether you've got java installed on your system before and as you can see i've got java installed already which is 1.8 but if you haven't got java installed it will tell you nothing was fine and that is when you need to go and install java so how do you do that let's take a look so we have a look about this this is how you check it So Java setup, how do we set up Java? If you go to the Java website, uh, Java download, you'll be able to download Java on that website. Let me see, I think 
So let's see. Let me see if I can. So if you go on Google and type um, Java download, then it will take you here. Then you can you can download it from here. Uh, so just go to Google, type in download Java, and it should it should be the first result or second on your screen. All right. Moving ahead. So to install Java, Java installation website, which we just saw, download the appropriate executable uh, setup file, run the executable setup file, and follow instruction. So once Java is installed, make sure the Java version command works properly. So when you install Java, although I've installed it, but you should have it, let me see, you have it in a zip file and you have to open i want to see whether i've got any zip file uh download all right so this is chrome though but this is this is what your zip file after you downloaded it it will be zipped up so you have to unzip it after downloading it so this is a typical example of a zip file. So for you to unzip it, you just right click on it. Uh, and you click on extract all. Then you can specify the location you want it to download to or to extract to. So you can change the, this location if you want to, or you can leave it at the suggested uh, folder and location uh, for you. But for mine, I've already downloaded it, so I'm going to be clicking on cancel. But that is how you extract a file if you don't know how to extract a file. All right, moving on. Okay, after Java is installed, right, and you've gone to your CMD to confirm the uh, you type java underscore java space dash version and you can see that java is installed on your um, on your machine then you have to carry out this next step and what is the next step you have to set the environment variable for java you have to set your java home and how do you do that so there's there are two ways you can actually get to environment variables the first one if uh, if you type uh, edit at the bottom of your screen, edit system environmental variables, and you click on it, it will take you here, and you can click on environmental variables, and you land on this page. This is where we want to take the action. But if you don't, I don't know which, what type of system you're using, but if you can't find that search button, there are this is another way. I'll show you another way you can. If you go to your folder, let me go. If you go to your folder and if you go to your PC, if you right click on your PC and you go to properties and you go to, you click on advanced uh, system settings then you can see your environmental uh, environment variables there as well. You click on it, that will take you to the same place. So it depends on which one is most convenient for you to use, but that is how you get your environment variables. So now we want to set Java Home. Although I have Java Home installed already, but I'll still show you how you can set yours. So after downloading, after downloading, after extracting the Java file, you need to locate uh, the folder wherever you've saved it. Let me see mine. All right. So mine is saved inside the program files. Yours might be in the program files as well. It depends on the path that you've set for it. But most likely it will be in the program um, file. So I click on... Okay, let me go back. 
So my C drive, I click on program files and I scroll down, my Java should be somewhere down there. This is my Java folder. I click on it and you can see my JDK version of my, uh, my Java. I click on that as well. You can see the bin folder. You must be on this page. And what, so you must ensure that you are on this page. You can see your bin folder. And what you need to do next is to copy the path of your Java of your of your Java. So you copy that, control copy, and you go back to your environment variables. Right? So you click on new. Let's assume I want to set a new one now. And I write Java underscore home. And the value will be the one that you copied, the path of your Java that you copied just now. That is mine. And you click on OK after that. But I've got it installed already, so I'm not going to click OK. Instead, I'll click on Cancel. But you have to click on OK, then you have to click on Second OK. But it's not done yet. Let's go back to our, to our um, presentation and see what next we need to do. So we are on this page now. We've set our Java home. All right, before downloading the JMeter, there's one more thing that you need to do on this page before downloading JMeter. And you need to go to, let me show you. So after setting your Java home, you scroll down to your path. This is mine. You can either double click on it or you can click on edit. So if you double click on it, it will open this up for you. And what you have to do is, you see percentage Java underscore home percentage uh, backward slash bin. You have to set that one as well. And how you can do that is you click on new and you set it at the bottom. So you set, you type percent percentage java underscore own percentage backward slash bin and when you are done typing that you click on ok then ok again then ok this as well so that is you done uh, installing java and you can now go back on your cmd and type java dash version to see whether you properly set it up and you should see something like this but just in case it cannot be found or you can't see anything try and restart your system and you should be able to when you go back to your cmd and do the command type the command you should be able to see it set up all right so that is that about java one next is how to download JMeter. This is the this is the key to what we are going to do, JMeter. So how do we download JMeter? So if you go to this address at the top of your screen, jmeter.apache.com, or we can easily go to uh, Google again and search for it. Uh, let's say download. And you can see it's the first result that you get if you click on it. And when you scroll down, you see the binaries. So under the binaries, you're going to download the zip file of the Apache JMeter, the second one. And as you know, for zip file, after downloading it, you have to unzip it again. The, the, just the same way I showed you earlier on by right clicking on the folder, and ex, you have to extract it after after downloading it. So and you, then you can specify the folder that you want to extract it to. So that is the 
about downloading JMeter. Let's go back to the presentation. All right, so we are here now downloading JMeter. So now that Java is installed, we are going to install JMeter. So as I said, you have to unzip after downloading it. You have to unzip the uh, file. After unzipping the file, this is what you should have. Something like this, you should have it. So when you double click on your JMeter, when you open it up, you should have uh, what you're seeing on your screen right now inside your folder. And the next slide is just an explanation of what different uh, uh, stuff you can see on your screen, the backlog, the bin, the docs, the extra, what they are for. So the JMeter root and all that. So to run JMeter, right? You have this, when you open your bin folder, okay. So you are in your directory now, right? To run JMeter, you need to double click on your bin folder, as you can see on your screen. When you double click on the bin folder, then it will take you to this page, to this screen. And for you to kickstart your JMeter, you need to you need to run it. You need to run it from when you open up your bin by clicking on JMeter.bat by double clicking on JMeter.bat. But I think in the new version of JMeter, I think probably they replaced that with Apache.bat. I'm not quite sure. Just in case when you download it, you don't see JMeter.bat, you can use Apache JMeter. Uh, dot part, I believe, uh, double clicking on it to open it just in case when you when you download just you don't see JMeter dot part. But mine, I'm using an old version, so I'll be starting mine with JMeter dot part. And the most easiest way me uh, without me navigating to my folders looking for my bin and all that, what I do is I just come to the bottom of my screen in my search engine, I just type in uh jmeter dot bat and i click on enter that will run some commands and after running those commands jmeter should be open and that is apache jmeter for you so that is a platform we'll be using for our performance testing. And that is how you open up your, you run, you run your JMeter and that is it. All right, so let's go back. So to run your JMeter, as I mentioned earlier on, you go to your JMeter bin slash folder. So to run, browse to the bin folder by double clicking on it double click on jmeter.bat to run it. So it should open both a command line, which you just saw, a command line terminal and the jmeter uh, user interface for you.